Today on Review This Thing, we're gonna take you on a quick tour of the Sako S20 Hunter. This is Adrian with Review This Thing, and today I am really excited to give you a quick look at the Sako S20 Hunter because this is a completely brand new gun to us. I just picked it up the other day. You can see we don't even have a scope on it yet, but it is such a sweet looking gun, I had to give you a quick tour. If you have a Sako rifle, especially if it's an S20, comment below and let us know what you think. Tell me what caliber it is and how it's been working for you. Let's take a look at the Sako S20 Hunter. Now, before we get started, I've checked it, rechecked it, and it's unloaded this entire video. This particular model is a 308, but it also comes in several different calibers. This is also the first slot Fusion model, so you can see that it has that camo pattern, but you can also get it in black, rough tech, and there are a couple of other camo pattern options. And while we're on the stock, let's stay here for just a minute. One thing that I've learned is they emphasize the customizability and modular ability of this gun. According to their website, it can easily be switched from this hunter style stock to a precision stock. And there are several other accessories that can be easily added to make tons of adjustments. Now we're not gonna get into that here in this quick look, but I just wanted to mention it. I really think there are a few things about this particular setup that I'm really gonna like. First thing, the stock has an aluminum chassis inside, which is supposed to help with stability and repeatability. If we start on this end, you'll see that it has an adjustable length of pull. And if you've seen our other rifle reviews, you know that's one of my favorite things. I have a fairly short length of pull, and most guns that don't have adjustments are way too long for me. This comes with three different spacers, and out of the box, it's right at 14 inches. If you take out those three spacers, which I totally plan to do, get it down to around 13 and a half inches, which will be much more comfortable for me. And now here, it actually has an adjustable cheek piece as well. On most guns, it's very difficult for me to get an actual cheek weld. It's usually more like a jaw weld. We've used some adjustable Kydex kind of pieces and those work well, but this is pretty cool that it's just part of the setup. And it's actually really easy to adjust. You just push the button on the side, lift, and then it locks into place. There are six different positions, so you should be able to customize that to get that perfect eye alignment on your scope. Also on this end of the stock, you can see there's a QD mount. There's one on each side. There's also QD mounts on the front and it has swivel studs as well if you'd rather put your sling on that one. And the next thing you cannot miss is this really big thumb hole style grip. Now on my turkey guns, I absolutely love a thumb hole or a pistol grip. I've never had one on a rifle, so I'm interested to shoot it and see how it does. It seems like it would have to make it more stable and easier to take an offhand shot. I don't really do that much whenever I'm rifle hunting, but I'll be very interested to see how it is shooting off a rail. Most of the time when I'm shooting at the range, I like to leave my thumb over on the side. And it actually does have a little bit of a curve, a little shelf where your thumb can just rest right there. I think another thing I'm really gonna like about it though is this vertical textured part of the grip. Kind of the same idea that most guns don't give me a good cheek weld. The space between the grip and the trigger is too much for me. So I have to end up holding my hand kind of weird to reach the trigger. But on this grip, I feel like I'm gonna be able to just comfortably rest my hand and easily reach that trigger. That textured grip should also make it easy to keep a hold of it, whether it's cold or rainy, whatever the case may be. Now, speaking of that trigger, it came out of the box at about one and a half pounds. And having just dry fired it a couple times, it feels like it's gonna be very smooth and very easy to shoot. Plus the trigger is also very adjustable. You can adjust the poundage of that pull and it's supposed to be adjustable forward and backward as well. Now we're gonna stay on the bottom of the rifle for just another minute. It has an almost flush mount magazine. And one, I guess, small touch that I think is gonna make a huge difference is that there's a cutout right in front of that magazine where the release is. So if you have on your gloved hand, you should still be able to just reach up in there and get that magazine out. And this magazine goes in and out really easily. And the foregrip is also textured. So again, just giving you that ability to keep a hold of it in varying weather conditions. Now let's move back down a little bit and look at the top side of the Sako S20 Hunter. The safety is a two position thumb safety and it feels resistance enough that it's not gonna accidentally get flipped, but also light enough that you can easily work it with your thumb. You can see this oversized bolt knob, which makes working the bolt very easy. But I do wanna mention that when the gun is on safe, then you cannot open the bolt. So just keep that in mind. As far as the action goes, it's super smooth, very easy to work, unloaded. I'm pretty excited to see how it will cycle rounds whenever it is actually loaded. But so far, I've been very impressed. 
And now you've probably already picked up on this, but this is one feature that I don't understand why more manufacturers don't do this. The rail is actually part of the action. You don't have to buy another rail, so that saves you a little bit of money. You also don't have to worry about making sure the screws are torqued right or them coming loose or anything like that. So I think that's just gonna add another layer of repeatability and hopefully accuracy. Finishing off our Saco S2000, you'll see that this first lot Fusion model has a tungsten Cerakoted barrel, bolt, and action. Speaking of the barrel, it's listed as a 24.4 inch fluted barrel and that is also threaded. And if you've seen our other reviews, you know that I absolutely love a threaded barrel, love a muzzle brake. This one actually comes with a radial muzzle brake, but also just having that threaded barrel means that you can very easily put a suppressor on there. And I'd say it's pretty high likelihood we're gonna do that at some point. And there you have it. That is our quick tour of the Saco S20 Hunter. We just gotta put our scope on it, take it out, get it sighted in. You may wanna subscribe so you don't miss that video. Then we'll do a complete review at some point. Hopefully we'll be as impressed with it as I've heard that we should be. If you like this video, give us that thumbs up, comment and tell us what you liked about it, and please share us with your friends if you don't mind. Come back next Sunday, we'll have another brand new video for you. And as always, thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for watching our Saco S2000 Quick Look. While you're here, give us that thumbs up, comment, share us with your friends, follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, check out our Amazon storefront, go to our website, reviewthisthingtv.com, subscribe to our newsletter so you don't miss anything, and thanks for watching.